Hi there and welcome to my channel, whether you're new here or whether you're a returning uh, writer. Uh, my name is Maria Franklin. I'm an author of psychological thrillers, a poet and a creative writing teacher. And this month uh, I have a short story uh, lesson uh, for you and it's February 2022 as I record this. So perfect for writing uh, a piece of romantic fiction aka a love story so even if this is the only love story you ever write it will have pushed you out of your comfort zone as a writer or if you are somebody who likes to write this kind of story uh, you, you're going to find this this lesson a breeze but I'm sure you'll take uh, a few um, pointers from it to help uh, develop you even more as uh, as a writer because um, I will be uh, supporting you um, we'll be having to think about the genre uh, of romance writing first then I will be supporting you to plan your own story then to write it and uh, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, editing at the end okay so let's find our way into the genre firstly by considering what readers might enjoy about romantic fiction and it's worth saying at this point that romantic uh, readers of romantic fiction are the most voracious readers they are so if you can get into writing this genre or if you're already uh, writing quite widely in this genre uh, you're going to have a good audience for your work okay so why do uh, readers of romance enjoy it so you might want to pause the video at this moment and make a list of your own and then compare it to some of the ideas I've got around this so firstly um, I would say escapism It certainly provides that escape from the humdrum of everyday life uh, to read uh, a, a love story. Um, and we can think about films within this as well. Um, so it's a, a love story, whether it's uh, on screen or on, on the page. Um, I would say the happy ever after element. It provides so much enjoyment. Happy ever after and the majority of romantic stories probably end with a happy ever after but we will be thinking about the ending later on we've not even got started yet um, and then I would say to experience the depths of emotion alongside the characters when you're really in a character's psyche you're experiencing what they are so let's add that to our list <coughs> of emotion um, and I would say uh, as readers um, they can uh, deal with the identifiable issues within their own relationships so something that a reader's going through in their own life they can relate it to what a character's uh, having to contend with uh, in a story so let's just shorten that to dealing with identifiable issues um and of course there's a bond created isn't there with between reader and, and character there's always that bond just right bond we know what we're talking about with that um, and I would say um, one of the big attractions to the genre of romantic uh, fiction is that element of uh, fantasy, often with the heroic love interest. Um, uh, these people don't necessarily always exist in, in real life. So uh, we'll put in brackets fantasy of heroic love interest, whether that's male or female. Okay, so the, a few uh, introductory things uh, to, to think about there. So, I mean, any issue can be explored within romantic fiction, any relational uh, issue, fantasies lived out. Um, I would generally advise a happy ending, but we've all read love stories where inferences can be made at the end where it's left a little bit ambiguous, or even tragic um, endings. Think um, Antony and Cleopatra or Romeo and Juliet. Uh, sorry, my uh, MA in creative writing's coming out here because uh, I had to study Shakespeare. So they're the two tragic love endings that sort of spring to mind uh, initially. 
Okay, so that's kind of got us thinking about the genre. So hopefully that's whet your appetite to write your very own piece of romantic fiction. So it doesn't have to be all um, superfluous and cheesy. We really can get into the, the nuts and bolts of an issue uh, within romantic uh, fiction and a real exploration of relationships between people. And that is, after all, what the reader is going to uh, enjoy. So next, let's now consider the ingredients that a romantic story might contain. So imagine we're writing a recipe for a romantic story. So again, we're still getting into the genre uh, here. So you might want to again hit the pause button, um, write your own list, then come back and compare it to mine. Right, so ingredients i hope you can see the board okay on the camera i think i've got it all in there <laughs> ingredients of a romantic story that being back in the classroom <coughs> okay so i'd say the the most important ingredient is emotion and feelings so this is within the, the characters involved and with in, in um, experiencing that through story, you're enabling your readers to actually feel them as well. So this can also be an exploration of darker human emotions, uh, such as fear and pain and disappointment and jealousy, uh, to name but a few. But this is really what creates the connection between the reader and the story. So that's the first ingredient. The second, as with most stories, is a building of tension. And that's through as the story goes on. It's not much of a story if there's not some tension created, and we'll talk a little bit a bit more about that soon. What we also need is an obstacle, something getting in the way of that happy ever after that we've talked about, uh, something keeping the characters apart. And this is what creates the tension or the conflict in the story. Um, I think one uh, important ingredient for a love story is that feeling that love can conquer anything. And we've all had that, that feeling at some point, haven't we? Love can conquer anything. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic love for another person. It can be the love for a child or a pet or an activity, anything. But love can conquer anything. Um, next ingredient, relatable situations, if at all possible or some element that a reader can hang on to, even if it's a real fantastical um, story that you're writing. Um, so that a, a primary human need, I think, is that sense of, of belonging. Um, it's a deep-seated desire uh, in many. So most people want to feel that, that depth of the connection that a human relationship offers, something that they can, they, they can relate to. Um, setting, of course, is important. Relationships don't take place in a vacuum, so we need to uh, ensure the reader can experience where uh, the characters are. Um, let me have a think. Lots of dialogue. Lots and lots of dialogue. We want to hear the characters talking to one another. Um, Avoidance of cliche where possible. Okay, so that can, that can come at editing stage. At first draft stage, I say just write your story. But then when you're editing, you maybe want to check that it's not full of cliches because romantic fiction is a breeding ground for cliches. So no cliches, if at all possible. They've all been done before. Um, we'd like, I'm running out of space on my backstory, maybe a little bit of backstory. Where have the characters come from? What's brought them to that point? So within that slash memories. Um, so that this this um, happy ever after or tragedy, and of course the uh, the journey to this point is never going to be a straightforward one. That's what creates your story. So happy ever after. Perhaps 
perhaps it doesn't it's not essential but it's something you might want to keep in mind i'd say probably the majority of love stories uh, a happy over a happy ever after or that feeling of triumph over adversity at the end okay so now it's time to get to work with all that being said Okay, so what you're going to do first is get to know your characters. So I'd like you to find, again, you might need to pause the video here. I'd like you to find pictures of two characters. So one will be your main character, your protagonist, and the other will be their love interest. Uh, so it's up to you whether it's male or female. Um, just... Um, Pictures that intrigue you, ones that you feel you could tell the story through their eyes. So Google Images is a great place to start, magazines. Try not to choose anybody famous where you've got a preconceived idea about them, but characters you can get to know and uh, really invent. So we're going to use a character-driven approach for this story. Uh, so the starting point is to get to know your characters and what's behind their situation. So I'm going to give you some prompts. Have a really good look at your character, your main character, once you've chosen your picture. Imagine who they might be. Um, do this again for your love interest. And I'm going to give you some prompts. <coughs> Excuse me. So firstly, uh, your character's name, uh, their, their age. So these are all the basic ones first. Occupation. You already know what they look like. Although you might be somebody who just wants to rec uh, to invent the uh, uh, the picture of your character without actually working from a physical picture. So if you do want to just conjure out the appearance of your character up in your mind, that's absolutely fine. Um, so you'd need to jot a few notes down first about their visual uh, appearance. So name, age, occupation, their home and family information, uh, their background. We've just mentioned that as being a, a, an ingredient. So what's brought, to, so it doesn't have to be loads of information. And in a short story, you don't have a lot of space for going too much back in, into the past. Um, their interests <coughs> now all this information probably won't make its way into the story but the better you know your character to start with the more your readers are going to be able to connect with them the more authentically you can bring them to the page so they're all quite basic um, pieces of information let's get in a bit more into uh, the character now so a talent they've been told they possess um, I, I, I'd like you to divulge a secret they have. So really going into your imagination here. Divulge a secret. What they're keeping secret from the world. Uh, one thing they did yesterday. This can really help you get to know your character. be writing all these down and then you might want to pause the video afterwards and spend some time with this because you're going to do this both for your protagonist and your love interest um, one thing they must do tomorrow um, their biggest dream can tell us a lot about a person what are they striving towards what is it they want their greatest fear you might even be able to add to this list as you're going through it other things might occur to you so make a note of them so who was their first love we are in writing a romantic story so we need to know this kind of thing as well and what's the most romantic thing they've ever done might be that they've never done anything romantic. This might be the chance to change them in your story. Most romantic thing they've ever done. I'm sorry if my head's in the way. I shall move in a moment. Okay, so there's your list. Copy that down. Look at the pictures of your characters. Get to know them. Pause the video and then come back when you've done because we're now going to bring the, the two characters together. Exciting stuff. Okay, so I'm now going to give you some, some prompts uh, to help you bring your characters together. 
Okay, so firstly, thinking about how the characters actually know each other. If they already do. So if they don't, then how will they meet? It's going to be either one of those. So how do they know each other already or how will they meet? So is one more in pursuit than the other? And that can be good for creating conflict as well. one more in pursuit of the other so do we have an unrequited love situation on our hands this february so valentine's day uh, in just a week from recording this and i'm going to give you some details at the end of the video um, of, a, of a short story competition that i've found um, that, that closes at the end of march so plenty of time for you to work on this so if applicable if you've got any other characters how do other people feel about them being together? And this can also create conflict, think Romeo and Juliet. How do other people feel about their relationship or possible relationship? And that can also provide the, the meat to go on the bones. Um, so, as I've mentioned before, something needs to be getting in their way, some kind of obstacle, okay? So, what is impeding them from being together? And this is the crux of the story. It could be that one of them's already in a relationship. It could be, it could be distance, it could be age, it could be... Um, a bad experience it could be anything so you're the author you're going to make up something really exciting here uh, and then any other details that are, that are occurring to you as you respond to these prompts hopefully all sorts will be bubbling up now that you've invented your characters and how they're actually getting together so do pause the video and give yourself some space with this if you need it um, if, if things aren't bubbling up immediately I often find going for a walk or doing some other repetitive activity like ironing gives me space to really think about my stories and my my characters Okay, so excellent. Well done. So now for the most exciting bit, we're going to open your romantic story. So you're going to use a scene by scene approach to write your story rather than planning a whole story overview, which I sometimes advocate, but not in this case. Uh, so you're going to allow your story to unfold organically, just as a relationship actually would. Um, so you're going to bring in the knowledge that you've now gained on what needs to be contained within a romantic story. So reread that, keep referring to it. Um, and uh, you're going to use a scene by scene approach, like I said, and I'm going to give you an approach to use, which is the scene card uh, planning method. So I'm going to give you some some headings. You could make some cards for this. I sometimes use this this method, especially if I'm planning a complicated story. But you find that by doing this, by the time you've planned your scene, it's almost written itself because you've got all the uh, the details there. So let me uh, draw up a blank screen card on a, on a clean sheet of paper. So uh, imagine this is, is your, your scene card. So along the top, um, give your, your scene a heading. So it's going to be your opening scene to start with. Um, and then have a little box here. Um, so... Let's think, let's uh, say time of date, sorry, time of day or the era, if you're not sending, if you're um, not setting it in the, the current day, the date, so the time of year, the season, all that kind of thing. So really pinpoint your, um, your story down. So what characters are going to be involved in your, your opening scene? Um, what's the setting? Um, and then any other information there that you can think of that 
that's going to be happening in your first scene. So we've got the the who and the the what and the when. Uh, you could use this box for a bit more of the why. And then I'd like you to divide the rest of your screen uh, uh, scene card into four. And think how your scene's going to open. So you're going to go in with a bit of a bang. So your scene introduction. It's usually best to have a character doing something or saying something rather than going in with a whole load of backstory. So have something happening, a hook that's going to uh, engage your reader at this point. So your scene introduction. So then what's going to happen? By this point, you should be maybe introducing a second character or thoughts of a, of a second character. Then what's going to happen in your scene? And finally, the conclusion. OK, so this is your very first scene. So it might just fill um, half a page of A4, might your opening scene if you're handwriting. I'd aim for about maybe 300 words for your, for your opening scene. I'm not going to give you any um, word count parameters for this story. I will just say that a lot of uh, competitions uh, invite stories that are around about 1,500 to 2,000 words. However, some short story competitions are less than 1,000. So it's often good if you've got an idea of, of word count before you set off it can just help you structure your story but i'd say for your opening 300 words uh, mine, mine are often about 500 but i do tend to be quite wordy and then have to edit it back later so this is for your introductory introductory scene uh, your first scene so once you've got all this information i'd then like you to write your first scene your first draft don't worry about punctuation spelling grammar anything like that just or cliche at this stage, just get it written and uh, you can go back and edit it and polish it up once you've got your story uh, in, in its entire, entirety. So in this introduction, just make sure you introduce both your characters and offer some information about what's standing in their way. Uh, so and just, in, just enjoy it. And then um, as you continue with your start, short story, we said about dialogue as being one of the vital ingredients. Just make sure that you, you continue to use as much dialogue uh, as possible so enable your, your reader to actually experience what's being said between the characters and and how they're actually uh, saying it um, you know don't just say uh, two uh, two characters had an argument actually show the argument happening so uh, the, the the reader can really get involved and form that that emotional connection and, and feel that tension and this is this is show don't tell, uh, and I will link to a show don't tell video at the at the end of of this uh, video. So, like I say, you're going to allow your story to unfold organically once you've got your your opening using the scene card approach for every single one of your scenes. Uh, so I've not asked you to plan out an overview. This is on, on purpose. So you're going to write just planning and writing as you go along, planning each scene and then writing each scene. So by now, by the time you've written your opening, you'll have a good idea of your characters and their situation. You might even have a, a, an ending in mind. You'll certainly have be starting to have some thoughts about the journey your characters are going to take through the story so as you plan and write in, in uh, and write your story scene by scene keep in mind why readers read romance and those key ingredients that, are, that a love story should contain hopefully you've you've made a note of them or you can wind the uh, the video back so once you've got your opening continue then to write your romantic story so write scene two next so plan scene two uh, aiming for three to five hundred words um plan it out first and then then write it so if you say aiming for 400 words as a, as a rough guide you could have 100 words in each bit of the 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 this sort of planning so uh, if you're if you work in that way this this can be a really useful way uh, to uh, approach it uh, so it's uh, don't don't rush it you've got um, i'm not back uh, 
uh, with another video for another month uh, so spend some time on it um, you can once you've finished and edited if you wish post your um, completed story into the Facebook group I have set up called Writerly Witterings if you search for Writerly Witterings on Facebook uh, I'll be able to uh, add you in and you, you can feel free to share uh, your story with the other writers who are in there it's a lovely supportive group um, I would advise you to not only post your own work up there but to look at the work of, of others um, and if possible um, add a, um, a positive comment about the story something you've loved about somebody else's story and maybe one way that it can be improved as well because that's how we writers learn through that constructive criticism and i do think the writerly witterings group is one where you can you can say something uh, that's been done well and something that could perhaps improve it you know, such as more dialogue or uh, 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 maybe a longer ending that's a bit happier or a more gripping opening line that kind of thing uh, so just uh, one thing that could be improved and one piece of constructive uh, criticism I don't really like the word criticism but I guess that's that's what it is okay so I'm going off on a tangent there so <clears throat> once you've um, written maybe four five six scenes and you're, you're getting towards where the uh, ending is let's have a think about let's wind up back to how we might end uh, a romantic uh, story so because this is really important um you need to firstly um in fact i'll invite you to make your own list before i start talking about this so how might uh, what things do we need to consider when we're ending our romantic story uh, so once you've got all those uh, four five or six scenes including your opening scene and you're about to write the ending what things do you need to keep in mind so the first one how you want your reader to feel remember the crux of romantic story is about feelings so how you want your reader to feel do you want them to feel sad at the end is it going to be tragic do you want them to feel hopeful optimistic uplifted that kind of thing right now you could also think of a twist could you include a twist in your tale? Something that your reader won't see coming. Now, this is commonly used in crime fiction, which we'll be coming on to later in the year. Um, but could you include a twist? So to do this, it's um, about posing what ifs at your story. What if this happened? What if so-and-so said something? Uh, what what if what if there's loads you write a list uh, at this point in your story what could change things what could turn everything on on its head think about how you want your ending to be do you want it to be tragic or happy or leaving room for inferences so letting the the readers draw their own conclusions now often what sort of reader you are might inform what sort of writer you're going to be in the case of this story um so could your uh, ending give uh, some kind of message or a moral without being preachy of course you know, love conquers all or love will always find a way i talked about cliches and i've just come out with two <laughs> but that's the kind of thing i'm talking about um will your ending um provide complete resolution and um, closure now if you're a, a reader who prefer, prefers to read stories where everything's tied up in a neat little bow then that might be the kind of story that you uh, like to tell as well um, and I'd say the most important thing about your ending is that the, the characters have changed in some way from the beginning to the end. So they must have been on some kind of journey and moved from where they were to where they now are. Something has to have, have, have changed. Um, so some kind of evolution. So how have your characters evolved? From the from beginning to end. So that 
some more considerations before you go on to plan your final scene, going back to using that uh, scene card approach. Uh, so plan it out again, write out that ending scene uh, and then when you've finally got your story in its entirety, you can start thinking about editing. Now I am going to come on to, I'm going to give a whole video on editing later in the year, uh, but for now um, I'm going to uh, just provide a link at the end of uh, this video uh, to an older video I, I posted up here on my YouTube channel uh, last year which gives some tips uh, for for editing uh, so if you can't wait that long for that next uh, that newer video so i did say i was going to tell you about the short story competition it's a free competition and it's it's called the bbc uh, national short story competition um, and i've checked it's um it's the entry is up until the 21st of march 2022 so uh, if, you, if you write something you're really proud of, then make sure you get it entered. After all, it's free. You've got nothing to lose there. But I do look forward to uh, to seeing some of these stories in the, the Writerly Witterings Facebook group. Uh, I do love to uh, to read your work. I don't always have time to comment straight away, uh, but rest assured, I do read uh, everything. And I, I love to see how supportive everybody is of each other. It's one of the best things about being in the writing community, just how, how much support there is uh, amongst uh, writers. It's certainly a very friendly and uh, wonderful, uh, supportive profession. Uh, so for more information about me and my work, go to mariafranklin.co.uk. You can sign up to uh, my writers keep in touch list there and learn more about my, my books and my courses. Um, if uh, if you've really enjoyed this video, you can you can choose to go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Maria Franklin. I do drink lots of coffee, as all of us writers uh, do. Uh, everybody who supports me on buymeacoffee.com um, during 2022 will get um, a little gift from me at the end of the year. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that as well. Uh, but for now, all that's left to say is I will be back uh, next month um, with uh, another short story uh, lesson. Uh, I will also be back in a week's time with, uh, with a poetry uh, lesson so it will of course, because it's February it will be love poetry uh, so do join me in a, in a week's time for that if you're watching uh, live. Uh, happy writing thank you for coming along uh, I hope you enjoy uh, writing and I will see you next time. Bye for now